Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and I want to talk about statin drugs. Um, we have to talk about statin drugs. Millions and millions and millions of people in the United States and all over the world are taking them and uh, you might remember, I paid some attention to this not too long ago, the FDA had uh, updated its advice to consumers regarding statin drugs to include warnings about cognitive decline and increased risk of developing diabetes as a result of taking them. Statin drugs, in case you don't know, are used to lower um, cholesterol levels. These are drugs like Mevacor and Lipitor and Crestor, et cetera, et cetera. Now, a new analysis shows yet another risk of taking these mostly useless pills. I'm gonna come back to that point shortly which is increased risk of musculoskeletal injuries, including strains, dislocations, and sprains. The researchers concluded the full extent of the risks may not be known, particularly for people who are active, which should be all of us. Um, the researchers further stated, quote, these findings are concerning because starting statin therapy at a young age for primary prevention of cardiovascular disease has been widely advocated. The study included 6,967 people who were taking statins and then an equal number of people who were used as control. One third of the patients were taking the maximum dose of the statins and um, taking these drugs, and regardless of the dosage or time on the drugs, was associated with a 19% increased risk of all types of musculoskeletal industry and injuries, 13% increased risk of dislocation strains and sprains, and a 9% increased risk of pain. The study concluded that one person person is harmed for every 37 to 58 people, depending upon the outcome measured, who are taking these drugs. Now, when you think about the millions of people who are taking these drugs, this one in 37 to 58 becomes actually quite a meaningful number. Now, this is a relatively new development, and the researchers concluded that more research is needed. Of course, there's always more research needed, particularly for people who continue to be physically active, and we should be encouraging everybody to be physically active. Um, they also stated that more understanding of all the risks associated with taking statins was needed to provide more complete benefit to both, uh, more complete data for both cost benefit and cost effectiveness analysis of uh, taking statin drugs. Now, the list of side effects continues to grow. This is not, you know, the, the, these last two updates are just the last two. There have been several over the years. And based on their limited efficacy, I don't know how many of you know this, but Crestor reduces the risk of a major cardiovascular incident by about 1.2%, Lipitor by 1.6%. I really think it's long past time to evaluate how these drugs are being prescribed because while there may be some patients who benefit, and this would include people and despite all their best efforts to practice dietary excellence and maintain normal weight and that sort of thing, they just can't get their cholesterol down to protective levels. This is really a tiny percentage of the population and the vast majority of people, I think if they were told that the side effects of the drugs, how limited their efficacy was and shown what diet can do to lower cholesterol and improve cardiovascular health and the risk of having an event, I think more people would choose diet. We're just not having that, what I call informed consent discussion. So um, if you or somebody you know is taking statin drugs, uh, providing this type of information may persuade them to take another look at using diet as a way to address their cholesterol. And uh, in case that's not enough to make you pay attention to practicing dietary excellence, this new study shows that a plant-based diet can result in better health outcomes and reduce mortality rates. It's not new, but there was a little bit of a new twist to the study in that it looked at different types of vegetarians and concluded that some vegetarian dietary patterns are definitely better than others, which I've been talking about for a long time. So. This research was conducted at Loma, Uni Loma Linda University, and it looked at death rates for tens of thousands of people and divided these people into five groups, people who were non-vegetarian, semi-vegetarian, pesco-vegetarian, lacto-ovo-vegetarian, and vegan. You didn't know there were so many categories of vegetarian. There are more than that. This was just the five categories they used. All participants who consume some version of the vegetarian um, or vegan diet have better mortality rates than people consuming a non-vegetarian diet. Men had a significant redu reduction in their risk of a cardiovascular event if they consumed more of a plant-based diet um, than their meat-eating counterparts. The same thing wasn't observed necessarily for women. Now, there were differences between the vegetarian groups that were um, worth talking about. For example, British vegetarians and U.S. Adventist vegetarians eat differently. The Adventists consume more fiber and vitamin C than the Brits. 
And the British vegetarians didn't have lower mortality rates than their non-vegetarian counterparts. So, so the type of vegetarian you decide to become, or plant eater you decide to become, does make a difference. Now, in an interview concerning this issue with Food Navigator, Gary Frazier, one of the authors of the study, pointed out that simply eating meat by itself did not make for a healthy diet. He pointed out the difference between the ultra-healthy uh, vegetarians who get their calories and, and uh, protein from foods like whole grains and legumes, they eat a lot of vegetables and fruits and that sort of thing, and what he called pudding and cake vegetarians. I've always called them the junk food vegetarians who are eating veggie shred cheese and you know, fruit juice, sweet and cookies and that kind of thing. And, and um, he also pointed out that there, it's difficult to construct research studies on vegetarians because of the fact that vegetarian diet means so many different things to so many different people. I mean, I know a lot of people who identify themselves as vegans and they aren't eating anything like a you know, health promoting diet, in my opinion. Now, in spite of these difficulties, David Jacobs stated at an event called the uh, International Congress on Vegetarian Nutrition at Loma U Linda University, and I think this quote is worth repeating to you. In general, plant-centered and vegetarian diets have more favorable chronic disease outcomes. This is one of the most consistent findings of nutritional epidemiology. It is protective to eat a plant-based diet. Jacobs went on to say that meat's not the enemy. In the absence of meat, he echoed Fraser's comment, not, was not um, as important as the presence of more phytochemical rich foods. And this is what I've been saying for a long time. Just eliminating meat doesn't mean that you're eating a health-promoting diet. You can reduce the animal food consumption down to two or three times a week, increasing plant consumption dramatically to fill in the gaps left behind when you took all that animal food out of your diet. That's really, that dietary pattern is really where the action is. So I'm glad to see that this discussion of different types of vegetarianism matter, you know, they do matter, is starting to become a little more mainstream. And my hope is that at some point in time, this discussion will lead to some definition of what a health-promoting plant-based diet is that we can all buy into and um, use as the gold standard in conducting research and that sort of thing and use as a reference. And I know that probably sounds like a pipe dream, but you know what? I'm going to keep hoping for good things to happen because sometimes if you just think it long enough, you can make it come true. So that's all for now. Have a great day and a great weekend. As usual, pass this on to anybody you think should watch it, and I will be back to you next week.